Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video. And today we're going to be reacting to the great Christopher Hitchens. And this one is about Americans and religion. So I figured what what more perfect of a video exists. We have Christopher Hitchens speaking on my own place and, and how religion has affected that place. And it's had a really heavy effect, guys, because we have just over 300 million people. And of those 300 million, over 200 million would identify as Christians with the most predominant form of Christianity being Protestant. You know, we have a lot of Protestant Christians and then offshoots of that, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons. Religion in the United States is, it's a, there's a lot of different religions that coexist, I will say, but I would say the, the founding of this country and our government and basically the entire underbelly of this country has been built up by Christianity. And although some of those effects may not be entirely obvious or can't be directly drawn to Christianity, I feel like it has had a lot of secondary and tertiary effects on the current state of affairs in the United States. So with that being said, let's check out what Hitchens has to say on Americans' religion. I'm, I'll be really interested to hear this. There isn't much more of an eloquent uh, and intelligent person when it comes to speaking on religion than the great Christopher Hitchens, and I can always appreciate hearing his insights, and I hope others can as well, regardless of their religion or lack thereof. So with that being said, guys, hit the like button, hit subscribe, consider joining the Patreon, first link in the description for full reactions to British shows and movies, and let's get right into this. Mr. B Senator, I should say, McCain, uh, recently transitioned from being an Episcopalian to being a Baptist. But this is America. This is supposed to be a big deal in your life, which kind of... But wait, let me tell the Why folks who this John Hagee is. Is that am I saying it right? Because I just learned that. about this guy today myself. But apparently he's someone who McCain goes around with. And I think he's every bit as ridiculous <laughs> as Farrakhan. John, he's got a mega church, right? He's one of those mega church preachers. He's and got a, TV event, a he's, TV minister. Right. He's got a book called Jerusalem Countdown, A Warning <laughs> to the World. He predicts that Russian and Arab armies will invade Jeru Israel and be destroyed by God, Israel will then be the site of a battle between China and the West, and will be led, which will be led by the Antichrist in his role as the head of the European Union. Can I jump in here? The Antichrist is the head of the European <laughs> Union, but then Jesus will return and, of course, win. <laughs> <laughs> Can I jump in here? This is a... Just one more thing. Okay. And he claims that Adolf Hitler and the Roman Catholic Church joined in a conspiracy to destroy the Jews. All right, he's right about that. That's the <laughs> But the other stuff that's is a, fucking that's a shrewd, crazy. That's a shrewd point. But this is America. You were turning me against him, and now suddenly I was thinking... This is America. Australia got the convicts. Canada got the French. We got the Puritans. We're stuck with them. We're never going to have a viable presidential candidate who doesn't believe some form of religious idiocy, whether it's Obama's preacher, whether it's uh, McCain's... Southern Baptism, we could have been stuck with Romney in the magical Mormon underpants. Like, it was going to be something. <laughs> we were going to have some president who believed some why stupid should, thing. We, we have to find the one with no, the least my offensive dear, beliefs. My dear, let me take you off on this. Why should, why should we reconcile ourselves or resign ourselves to that? Uh, Mr. Lincoln didn't believe any of this nonsense and never said that he did. Mr. Jefferson didn't believe any of this nonsense and never said that he did. We're not would running you, now. Would we dispense with, with, uh, with uh, presidents of that caliber because they wouldn't bow? The Pew Research uh, report on religion this week, did you see? Yes. Well, um, it says that maybe 15... It's good for 15, us, 15, Chris. 15, you're very good. That maybe 40%, was... 15% of Americans don't identify with any of this, no affiliation of any kind. Right. And well, almost 16%. everyone who does has changed at least once. In other words, yes, I used to believe that the Pope was God's vicar on earth, but then I got married to a Seventh-day Adventist, so I don't believe that anymore. How yes. absurd can that be? Well, you yes. should run for president. Right? I mean, well, you should get I, in a time machine and I go be born my, in this I changed my faith in order to get laid or is that married or <laughs> but my children of course will be congregational wow. I mean we, are we expected to take this nonsense seriously for a second if he got well, married gonna... to get laid boy did you make a mistake <laughs> <laughs> but yes if you didn't hear that statistic 44 percent of Americans they have, have at some point from childhood to adulthood switched their affiliation. Yeah. They, they have more uh, loyalty to their cell phone provider well. than they do. <laughs> you know, the cable networks used to go through this. They called it churn. And right. people would take HBO for three right. months and then go over to Showtime. Oh, right. turn it. And, you know, I think the... You can say Showtime. Oh, okay. And I think the answer for, for the churches is the same it was, as it was for the cable networks. Get better movies. But the fact is that... <laughs> <laughs> 
No. <laughs> with only one amendment. <laughs> only a slight, I agree with you. Older movies. <laughs> yeah. But the fact still is that a Older majority, a vast majority of Americans still believe in religion, and that's what we're overlooking here. Seventy-eight percent. Those they don't believe in God. Yes. But no, they believe, yeah, they in believe in religion. Believing in religion is fine. Believing. That's interesting. Seventy-eight percent. I wonder when this was filmed because now I believe it's. We're getting close to the low 60s percent. Well, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, that's that's not true. I thought he was talking about Christianity specifically. I'm not sure about how many people believe. We're looking uh, at 78 percent. Those they don't believe in God. Yes. But no, they believe in religion. Believe in. Believing in religion is fine. Believing in God is the crazy bit. Americans, well, well, Americans have a very strange relationship with religion. It's like you can't pin anybody down, and it's a cafeteria everything. You can believe whatever you want. You can pick up religions and discard yeah. them and put on new ones. But Americans seem to only be able to support somebody who has some religion, any religion, because we infer right. something good about their character into that, Why as if we, having no, a religion makes you a better person. True. And I disagree. That, that's only true if you keep on saying so. It's never been tested. Ask a Republican in 1975, will you vote for president? for a candidate who's a second-rate Hollywood actor who's been divorced. Is that what you're going to vote for? No. They haven't met Ronald Reagan yet. Okay? Right. Yeah. We haven't had a... We, it, it was we a could easily, reason, We very easily could have, as Mr. Lincoln shows and Mr. Jefferson showed, uh, a candidate of better-than-average integrity and ability who says, as it happens, I have no invisible means of support. <laughs> and, in the case Trust of, me. and in the case of one of them, and by the way, I own slaves. Yeah. Now, you're a Hindu, Sachi? I am indeed. And what was striking about these they... figures, by the way, 1%. But there's also 1% of Americans who are Buddhist. And I wondered, has there been a lot of illegal immigration from Burma? It turns out that three quarters of these people are American whites who've decided to declare themselves Buddhist. Yeah, I'm right. sure. Because Buddhism yeah. really isn't even a religion. It's more of a philosophy. It is a way of life. It's a code of ethics. They, they don't exactly. believe in a personal god who does magic. But most super Buddhists in America book are Soko Kokai Buddhists. Who be, it's a gimme sort of Buddhism. It's a materialistic but, Buddhism. And it seems antithetical to what Buddhism is actually Maybe it'll about. become the majority of faith. The highest retention for, of childhood to adulthood with sticking with your religion is, is Hindu, 84%. The lowest, Jehovah Witness. 37 <laughs> percent. Only 37 percent of the people who started out as Jehovah's Witness stuck with it. Michael Jackson being one of them. Uh, also, evangelicals. Evangelical Christians yeah. lead among people who get divorced. What do, what do you think's behind that? You're you're a religion expert. Uh, well, I bro, I see. I'm gonna let Christopher Hitchens speak on it, but I have my own hypothesis, which is a lot. A lot of times since. The idea of sex is so focused on heavily, especially among evangelicals, which would be like the people who go to Baptist church. I guess that's a, a form of uh, Protestants. And like that leads people because you're, you're not supposed to have sex till marriage. And that's like really heavily emphasized among people who practice that specific sector of Christianity. Although they would claim that is the, you know, the only Thing. That's just Christianity. But um, that is so heavily emphasized. So a lot of people like rush things. They rush into marriages or that, that would be my hypothesis. And then, you know, if you're looking for something or forcing something, it's probably not going to be the right fit. So some po at some point down the line, it won't end up working out. And, you know, that's not just religion. There's a lot of societal pressures that lead people to rush into marriage. That's why we have basically in the United States, you can go Go around a room in, in a group f full of kids and go one, two, one, two, one, two. All the ones, they're going to be divorced. So it's, when you look at it that way, it really is depressing and something needs to be done because divorce ruins families. It ruins people's lives who have are completely innocent, like kids. And it's really a really terrible thing. <laughs> also, evangelicals, evangelical Christians lead That's my among hypothesis people who get among divorced. What do, you, what do you think's behind that? You're Let's, you're a religion expert. Um, and Buddha's uh, born through a slit in his mother's side. What? No. Come yes. On. yes. Come on. Yes. yes. No. That's what they say. That's what is a what rare. What always like... interests me about the is why do they think of the birth canal as being just a one-way street? <laughs> <laughs> you, can you name any deity who wasn't born of a virgin? Horus. Right. Horus, uh, the Aztecs, the Jews, yes, all of them, the, uh, Romulus and Remus. Um, L. Ron Hubbard? A Buddha born from the slit. <laughs> Anything but the... Oh, L. Ron, L. Ron Hubbard. Hubbard. Oh, L. <laughs> He's a prophet, not a... Oh, a so deep, I get right. confused. Zenir, what was he born Zenir, of? yeah, right. Parthenogenesis. A great so, fiery star. Yeah. It, it remains 
a mystery. But the, uh, the reason for evangelical hypocrisy is very simple. I mean, it would be the, it's the same as Larry Craig. It's the Craig factor. Which is? Those who condemn things mightily and go on hammering the pulpit about them have a secret share in the desire for them. And that's been true since before religion was invented. Most people who seek to impose their morality on others usually have a hard time imposing it on themselves, which is what we see with the evangelicals in the United States, where the divorce rates and the out-of-wedlock birth rates are higher in the Bible Belt than they yeah. are in Massachusetts or California or you Washington. You hear some preacher thundering about faggotry, and the next thing you know, he's going to be found down on his lousy knees. <laughs> oh. Guys, another thing I wanted to say about really, the Bible it? Belt. So a lot of British people will make fun of... United States, you know, for the, the hillbillies and what you guys would consider rednecks. I've heard it a lot when I was in Britain, especially the British youth, doing like what they would consider a cowboy accent. And oftentimes you're impersonating these people who are in the Bible Belt, which would be considered, you know, the southern central United States of America, Arkansas, Mississippi, Missouri, Alabama. Alabama has literally been stereotyped for just having incest in the United States because and it's internationally known for that because of how... <laughs> probably an incest really is uh, among those areas and think about so that was interesting to hear christopher hitchens the first thing when he was asked about why is the divorce rate so high among evangelicals he points directly to sex he talks about how why they consider the birth canal to be a one-way one-way street you know babies being born out of the rib uh people being like the virgin mary just things are very like idealized and People think that will translate into real life, that we can live these lives f just completely free of error, be completely holy. And of, of course, they're going to preach that and impose that upon others. But oftentimes when they look in the mirror and, and see what their own actions are, they don't exactly fall into the <laughs> fall under the commandments and rules that they have been preaching and imposing to others with megaphones on the street, with pamphlets being handed out among their own families and friends and yeah guys I, I don't think it's very difficult to infer about my own uh beliefs after what i've been saying but i think i it's just i'm i'm very passionate about things like this and i think christopher hitchens you know he's dead now but he really was a a pioneer because especially back you know it's becoming more uh popular now and and not necessarily as much of a you know underground thing to not believe in anything but back then like and this isn't even back then we're talking like a decade i think christopher hitchens was, came out with like you know god is not great in the you know early 2000s ish something like that but this was not as easy to talk about and he's probably faced a lot of backlash throughout his time but he felt that it was that important to to you know, preach these things and, and spread his knowledge among others because of, well, because of exactly that, like ridiculous things like that. I could go on for hours and hours, guys, but this was a really fascinating video to watch. I'm not sure what show or, or panel this is from, but the, the, the topic is always going to be of interest to me. So if anyone wants to, you know, talk about this in the comments, if you have any other, I'm drawing a star I don't, guys, I'm not, you don't, you will not find me at a satanic temple. Please stop. I'm sorry. It was, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, guys, if, if you would like to hear any more insights uh, about growing up in the United States and, and uh, being confronted with religion, like every other citizen has at some point, then let me know in the comments down below. I'd completely be very interested in sharing those experiences with you guys. With that being said, guys, I think that's going to be all for, for today. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I will catch you all in the next one.